welcome. This is um, Worksheet 9.1, and I'm going to explain to you how to solve all the problems in Worksheet 9.1. So the first problem says, what is an Arrhenius acid and where is an Arrhenius base? So based on the Arrhenius' definition of what acids and bases are, an Arrhenius acid, okay, I'm going to use the green color for that, the acid is going to be a substance that when it's added to water, releases protons or increases the concentration of the protons, okay? So an Arrhenius acid, for example, would be the hydrochloric acid because when it's in water, when it's dissolved in water, so when it's aqueous, associates or breaks into two ions that are going to be the proton, H+, plus, and the chloride. That is why it's an acid, because this is a substance that adds hydrogen ions to the solution. On the other hand, in Arrhenius' base, the base is going to be a substance. Arrhenius' base is going to be a substance that when it's dissolved in water, it adds hydroxides to the solution. So, for example, an Arrhenius base would be the sodium hydroxide that when it's dissolved in water, so aqueous, it will break into sodium plus, that is aqueous as well, and OH negative. So for that reason, because this is a substance that adds hydroxides to the solution, that is considered an Arrhenius base. So it increases the concentration of the hydroxide. Arrhenius acid increases the concentration of the hydrogen ions. Arrhenius base increases the concentration of the hydroxides. Number three, what is a bronsted lauric acid and what is a bronsted lauric base? So based on bronsted lauric, an acid is going to be the substance that is a proton donor. So it's the substance that donates protons, that gives protons away, okay? Remember, proton is the word that we use for the hydrogen plus ions. And then a base, a bronsted lauric base, it's going to be a proton acceptor. So it's going to be a substance that accepts uh, the proton, that takes the protons from other substances, okay, from the acids. Okay, so based on this, we're going to do activity four, that is asking you to identify the acids and the bases here, and then to identify the corresponding uh, conjugate base or conjugate acid. So you have an example, the example of this, the example that you actually have on the notes, you have NH3 plus water yields NH4 and hydroxide. So what happens here is that you notice how the NH3 turns into NH4. That means that the NH4 has gained one proton. So that proton in this case is coming from the water. So that's why the water in the first example is the proton donor. The water is the proton donor, so that's why the water is the acid. And then the base is going to be the proton acceptor, so that's why the NH3 is the base, okay? Now, when the proton donor, so the acid, gives the proton away, loses that proton, it becomes into its conjugate base. And the conjugate base on the, of the acid, in this case, is going to be the hydroxide, because that is the water minus one H plus. And then when the base takes the proton, it, it's going to become into its conjugate acid. So that's why NH4 is going to be the conjugate acid of the base, because it's the base plus one proton. Now, let's work on the following problems. You have NH3, N, sorry, HNO3, so nitric acid and water. So in this case, water can act as an acid or a base, depending on the situation. So in this case, we see how the water turns into hydronium, so H3O+. Plus. That means that the water has gained one proton. So in this case, the acid is going to be the nitric acid, the HNO3, because it's giving a proton away to the water. So now the water is going to take that proton and it's going to become H3O+. Plus. Okay, so now the acid, as we said, it's going to be the HNO3. The base is going to take the, the proton, so the base in this case is the water, that's the one that I will identify. And then when the HNO3 gives the proton away, gives to, and gives the proton to the water, it's going to become the nitrate, right? So that nitrate, that nitrate, is what we call the conjugate base of the acid, okay? 
And then when the water takes one proton and becomes a hydronion, that's going to be the conjugate acid of that base. So that's why H3O plus is the conjugate acid of the base. Okay, so the next example has the HCl in NH3. So as you see, NH3 turns into NH4. So it has gained one proton. So that's why the HCl has given the proton away to the NH3. The HCl becomes Cl minus, and the NH3 that has gained one proton becomes NH4 plus. So now the substance on the reactants that gives the proton away is the acid. So that's going to be HCl. The substance in the reactants that takes the proton is going to be the base. So that's the NH3. When the acid loses the proton, it becomes into its conjugate base. So the conjugate base of the acid is the chloride. And then when the base gets the proton, it becomes, it becomes into its conjugate acid. So that's why NH4 is the conjugate acid of the base, which is NH3. And finally, we have two other substances here. So we see how the carbonate turns into hydrogen carbonate or bicarbonate. So the CO3 to minus is getting one proton, right? Going to receive a proton and become this. It's going to receive a proton, so that is going to be, sorry, I used this one. Yeah, that's going to be the base. So CO3 minus is the base. Two minus, sorry, carbon. And then the other substance that you have here is going to be the acid, okay? So H, C2, H3, O2. Now, when the acid loses the proton, it becomes the conjugate base of that acid. So the conjugate base of that acid would look like this. And then when the base gets the proton, it becomes into its conjugate acid. So the conjugate acid is going to be the bicarbonate, hydrogen carbonate. Okay, let's go for the next problem. So the next problem says, for each of the following, if we have a strong acid or base, show the ionization or dissociation. And if it is a weak acid or base, put a star. Okay. So first of all, let's uh, identify the strong acids and bases. The strong acids and bases here are based on the list that I gave you on the notes. That's what you need to know. So this is a strong acid, the hydrochloric acid. This is the strong acid, it's the sodium hydroxide. And the potassium hydroxide, is a, it's a strong base. Sorry, sodium hydroxide is a strong base. So these are strong acids and bases. So strong acids and bases, remember, are strong because they completely dissociate. They break totally apart when they are dissolved in the water, they break into their corresponding ions. So the hydrochloric acid is going to break into H plus and Cl minus. The sodium hydroxide, it's going to break into sodium plus, plus sodium plus, sorry, plus hydroxide. And then the, um, the sodium, the potassium hydroxide is going to break into potassium and hydroxide. Okay, so now to identify the uh, weak acids and bases, we needed to put a star. Instead of using the star, I'm going to use this fancy, I, I don't know, golden uh, color. Okay, so the other ones are going to be weak acids or bases. So this is a weak acid, this is a weak acid, this is a weak base, weak acid, weak acid. Okay, so anything that is not as strong or is not on the list of the strong acids and bases, that is going to be weak. Okay, all right. Next problem, complete the following table. So for this table over here, before we go over the table, you need to remember a few things. And those few things are the following. Remember that if you want to calculate the pH of a substance, the pH of a substance is always going to be, or okay, I'm going to say a pH of a solution, is always going to be pH of the solution is always going to be the negative logarithm of the concentration of protons in that solution, okay? The pOH of the solution, it's always going to be the pOH, pOH of the solution is always going to be the negative logarithm of the concentration of hydroxides in that solution. The pH plus the pOH, so pH plus pOH, remember pH 
plus pOH always equals 14. If you're given the pH and you want to find out the concentration of the protons, you will have to do 10 times 10 to the power of negative, negative pH. If you're given the pOH and you have to find the concentration of the hydroxides, that's going to be 10 to the power of the negative pOH. Okay, so using all this is how I have actually solved the, the problems where I have filled out this, this chart over here, this table. Okay, all right, so based on this, I'm going to write the answers to, the, to each of the spots that you see in that table. If you have any questions, you're always welcome to ask. Okay, so for the protons, the concentration of the protons is 1 times 10 to the negative 9. That makes us understand, doing using the, the formula for the pH, that the pH is 9. Because the pH plus the pOH adds up to 14. 14 minus 9, that's 5, so the pOH is going to be 5. Okay? You look at the pH always to look at the basic or acidic. So the pH that is higher than 7 is always basic. Now, the, to find the, the concentration of the hydroxides, remember that this is what I just told you here, that if you have the pOH that is 5, the concentration of hydroxides is going to be 10 to the power of negative 5. 10 to the power of negative 5. Okay. Now, in the next case, they give you the hydroxides. So doing the negative log of the hydroxides concentration, you take get the, the pOH, and that's going to be 1.38. 14 minus that number gives you the pH, so it's going to be 12.61. 12.61 is higher than 7, so this is basic. Now, to find the concentration of the uh, hydrogen ions, here you need to do 10 to the negative of the pH, 10 to the power of negative pH, right? So if you do 10 to the power to the negative pH, the answer is going to be 2.45 times 10 to the negative 13. Okay. Next one. If the pH is 3.75, the pOH would be 14 minus that. So that would be 10.25. If we have a pH that is lower than 7, that is acidic. To find the hydroxides, you need to do 10 to the power of negative the pOH. So that's going to give you 5.62 times 10 to the negative 11. And then to find the hydrogen ions, you need to do the 10 to the power of the negative pH. So that's going to give you 1.78 times 10 to the negative. And then for the last one, if the pOH is 5.45, the pH is 14 minus that, so 8.55. That means that we have a basic solution. And again, to find the hydroxides, you do 10 to the power of the negative pOH, so that's going to be 3.5 times 10 to the negative 6. And to find the concentration of the hydrogen ions, that's going to be 10 to the power of the negative pH. So that's going to be 2.82 times 10 to the negative 9. Activity 7. What would the pH of each of the following be? Remember for the basis that you have to calculate the pOH and then calculate the pH. Okay? All right, so what you need to do here is you need to dissociate or break the acids or the bases. And once you break them down, see whether they are broken down into hydrogen ions or hydroxides. And then we go from there. So, for example, for example, if we have 1 times 10 to the negative third a molar of hydrochloric acid, the hydrochloric acid will be broken into, the hydrochloric acid will be broken into, let me do it here. H plus and Cl minus. Okay. The molarity of the hydrochloric acid is 1.0 times 10 to the negative third. So because this reaction is one 
to one, the molarity of the hydrochloric, sorry, the molarity of the H plus ions is going to be the same, same concentration. So it's going to be 1.0 times 10 to the negative third. Okay. So because we know the concentration of the hydrogen ions, we can find the pH. So the pH is going to be the negative log of 10 to the negative third, or 1 times 10 to the negative third, which is the same. So the answer here, the pH is going to be 3. Okay? So now, if the question is what would be the pH, which is directly calculated it, so the pH is going to be 3. This is going to be what we call a strong acid. Okay. Uh, now we have a base. So the base is sodium hydroxide. So for the sodium hydroxide, same thing. We break the sodium hydroxide into the corresponding ions. So that's going to be sodium plus and OH minus. So now what we do is we look at the stoichiometry. And we see that for every one sodium hydroxide, we have one hydroxide. Okay, so if we have a molarity of 0.01 molar of sodium hydroxide, we will have the same molarity for the sodium for the hydroxide. So to find the pH of this solution, we have to first find the pOH because we have the concentration of the hydroxides and then the pH. So the pOH, the pOH, it's going to be the negative log of 0 0.001 and that is 2 and then once we find the pOH the pH is going to be 14 minus 2 equals 12 so because the pH is 12 this is a very basic solution next one we have again the hydrochloric acid that breaks into hydrogen ions H plus and Cl minus. Okay, so same thing because the reaction coefficients are one to one. If I have 0 0.035 molar of hydrochloric acid, I will have the same molarity 0 0.0035 for the hydrogen ions. So from here, I find the pH, which is going to be the negative logarithm of 0 0.035. Sorry, one more zero, 35. And the answer to this is 2.45. Next one, it's hydrobromic acid, HBr. So same thing, I break the acid into hydrogen plus and bromide, Br minus. The stoichiometry shows me, the, the balancing of the equation shows me that it is one to one, the ratio. So because it's one to one, the hydrogen ions here again, the hydrogen ions have a molarity of 0 0.00098. Okay, so from here, I calculate the pH, and the pH is going to be negative log of 0 0.123098. And the answer to this is 3. Next one, sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide. So to find the potassium hydroxide, and it's pH, this solution's pH, what I do is exactly the same thing. I dissociate the base, I break the base into the corresponding ions. So that's going to be potassium plus and OH minus. And then because the coefficient of the KOH and the coefficient of the OH, which is what matters to here, is one to one, that means that the hydroxide concentration is also 8.2 times 10 to the negative 4. So from here, what I do is I find I find the pOH of the solution that is going to be the negative log of 8.2 times 10 to the negative 4. And the pOH in this case is going to be 3.086. And then once I do this, this is the pOH, the pH is going to be 14 minus that number, so 14 minus 3.086. So the answer here is going to be 10.91. That 
that is the pH of this um, solution. The pOH is 3.08, the pH is 10.91. In the end, for F, we have the potassium hydroxide, that is the base. So we break it into potassium plus, plus OH minus. The molarity of the potassium hydroxide is 0 0.075, and the coefficients are 1 to 1. So 0 0.075, that's the molarity of the hydroxides. So I find the pOH, because that's what I know, the concentration of the hydroxides negative log of 0 0.075. And then here I find the, um, I do the calculations and I find out that this is 1.125. And then finally I find the pH that is going to be 14 minus that number, minus 1.125. And that's going to be 12.87. That's the answer. Okay. For the following problem here, it says complete the following reactions and balance the equation. So remember that there were three combinations, right? And depending on what combination we have in front of us, um, the products are going to be one product or the other one, but they follow patterns. All right, so the first um, reaction here is magnesium hydroxide with hydrofluoric acid. So magnesium hydroxide is a base and the HF is an acid. Okay, and it's a base because it has a hydroxide and it's an acid because it donates a proton, right? So this is an acid-base reaction. So in an acid-base reaction, I'm going to write it here, acid plus base, okay, so that you remember. This is acid plus base. So every time you have an acid plus a base, the products are always, always, always going to be a salt and water. So water is going to be one of the products. And then the salt is going to be the consequence of combining the metal from the base, okay, with whatever is remaining from the acid when you remove the proton. So in this case, we're going to combine the magnesium, that is magnesium 2 plus, with the fluoride, that is fluoride 1 minus. Okay, so magnesium 2 plus, fluoride 1 minus, that's going to give us magnesium fluoride. Again, this is the magnesium that comes from here, magnesium 2 plus, and the fluoride minus. Okay? So now we balance this equation, and to balance this equation, we need to write it to here, and we need to write it to in front of the water. All right, so let's find another one that is an acid and a base. An acid and a base also would be this one, acid plus base. You have an acid because this is a substance C acid plus base. This is a substance that donates protons or increases the amount of protons in the, in the solution. And then KOH is a base because it donates and it gives to the solution hydroxides. Okay, so acid plus base, salt plus water. So water plus salt. The salt again is going to be the metal, always the metal, so K plus plus whatever is remaining from the acid when it loses the proton, okay? So in this case, it's going to be the metal salt is going to be KClO4, okay? And then once you find that those are the products, you need to balance the equation, but in this case, this equation is balanced, so you don't have to do absolutely anything else. Okay, so for the next one, um, that is, let's just do the acid plus base ones first, okay? The next one that is in acid plus base, it's F, acid plus base, sorry, plus base. Because you have the hydroxide and you have the, you have a hydroxide and then you have a, a substance that donates protons. Anything that has hydroxide that is OH, that's gonna be a base, okay? Remember the definitions of acids and bases. Both definitions are valid. So if any of them fall into one of the definitions, that should be it. Okay, so the lithium hydroxide and the hydrofluoric acid, they combine together, and because acid plus base is equal to salt plus water, you're gonna have water plus the salt, and the salt is going to be always the metal, so the lithium plus, lithium one plus, plus whatever is remaining from the acid when it loses the proton, so with the F minus. So you're gonna have lithium fluoride, 
And then if you look at the, the whether the equation is balanced or not, you, you understand that this is balanced, so you don't do anything else. Okay, so let's check uh, some different types of reactions here that we're gonna understand and follow patterns, okay? If you actually look at the B here, the second reaction, we have a carbonate, and this is a metal with a carbonate, so this is a metal carbonate. So when we have an acid, acid plus a metal carbonate, remember that the products are always, always, always CO2, water, and the metal salt. Okay, so we're gonna write CO2, H2O, and the metal salt. Now, the metal salt is always the metal that the carbonate has, in this case, with whatever combines with whatever remains from the acid when it loses the protons. Okay, so in this case, the metal salt is going to be magnesium. That is two plus, remember, magnesium was two plus. Okay, with the C2H3O2. And because the C2A3O2, sorry, just lost one proton, this ion is one negative, C2, H3, O2 minus. So we need two of those to compensate the charge of one magnesium. We do the crisscross rule. So that's why we put all this in parentheses and then we write it too. So now what we do is we balance the equation and to balance the equation, we need to actually write a two here and that should be it. Okay, so we have a similar reaction that is a metal hydrogen carbonate, indeed, metal hydrogen carbonate here with an acid. So when we have a metal hydrogen carbonate with an acid, the products are very similar. It's going to be CO2 plus H2O, and then you have to understand how to find the metal salt. So the metal salt is always going to be the metal, so potassium plus, that's whatever is remaining from the acid when it loses the protons. So in this case, we have an acid that has one proton. So whatever is remaining is gonna be ClO4 minus. So we put them together and that's gonna be KClO4. And then finally, we have the other, the other type of um, reactions that we learned. That is when you have a metal with an acid. So a metal with an acid, it's always going to form hydrogen and a metal salt. So here it says the copper is gonna be two. So hydrogen and a metal salt. So one of the products is gonna be the hydrogen. Then the metal salt is going to be always the metal. So copper two plus, that's why we're saying here that it has a charge of plus two with whatever is remaining from the acid when it loses the proton. So Cl minus. So this is gonna be Cu, Cl2, okay? So one, we have this completed, and we balance the equation. So we balance the equation. Let me use another color here. We balance the equation. And to balance this equation, we need a two in front of the hydrochloric acid, and that should be it. And the last question says, Small lake becomes acidified due to the acid rain. Describe how the pH can be raised to a more healthy level. If you have a low pH in a solution, in order to raise the pH, you need to add a base. Okay, so that's what you need to do. You should be adding a base to the, to the lake. Okay, so what you need to do is you need to add a base. If you add a base, what you're gonna, what it, if you add a base, what's gonna happen is that the pH of the overall solution is gonna go up. Okay. Same thing that if you have something that is basic, if you add something acidic, the pH is going to go down. Okay. So that is the end of the worksheet 9.1.